Hello guys. Today I would like to show you how to simulate combustion inside a liquid rocket engine injecting gaseous propellants in a combustion chamber. For this purpose, I have made some preliminary calculations of the engine combustion chamber working on oxygen and methane and created the coordinates file to export in the design modeler program of ANSYS. The method of characteristics allowed calculating the profile of the supersonic nozzle. Applying known methodologies for liquid rocket engines, the subsonic section of the combustion chamber was designed. If you are interested in repeating my calculations, the coordinates are available in this tutorial description. The design modeler accepted my geometry file in text format. The optimal oxidizer to fuel ratio is equal to 3. To have similar inlet velocities from the injectors, I've created sections of oxygen inlet and the methane inlet in the ratio of 5 to 1, 5 mm for the oxygen and 1 mm for the methane. When these divisions are ready, I have split my inlet surface. The supersonic zone was also separated from the subsonic one to organize a better meshing near the throat. Since such a simulation project is just a demonstration of combustion, the injectors were not placed in an optimal way. To satisfy the combustion chamber cooling during its elaboration fuel and oxidizer injectors. I have used the mapped meshing option in the meshing tool and divided the computation of domain in radial direction into 130 elements with bias equal to 30 for an appropriate boundary layer simulation. In the inlet, we organize 10 cell layers for the near wall zone where viscous effects take place. The supersonic nozzle has 60 by 130 elements in the axial direction and radial directions, respectively. In such a way, we can reach sufficient resolution in the supersonic section for simulating both the boundary layer and the main jet. The subsonic part of the combustion chamber is 202 by 130 elements. The mesh in the subsonic region is uniform and nice looking. It will allow simulating the flow behavior with maximum accuracy. Every fuel injector has one element thickness, and every oxidizer injector has five elements of thickness. Then, I have created the following name selections, oxidizer, corresponding to injection of oxygen, fuel, corresponding to injection of the methane, external wall, and outlet. To simulate combustion and fluent, we set up a pressure-based, transient, and axisymmetric model. We need to enable the energy equation K omega SST model. To enable combustion, we can choose between two options, species transport or non-pre-mixed combustion. For demonstration purposes, I will select non-pre-mixed combustion since it allows an external library of diffusion flamelets. Another option that I will not use today would be the species transport volumetric reactions. It's an internal algorithm that also allows calculating combustion using embedded libraries. However, the prediction of the flame temperature may not be very accurate in some cases. So, I select non-pre-mixed combustion, steady diffusion flamelet, non-adiabatic energy treatment, inlet diffusion, compressibility effects. After, I set up my equilibrium operating pressure equal to 2 MPa and import Chemkin mechanism from external library Grimec 3 available online. Such a library is valid for gaseous hydrocarbon combustion with oxygen or air, according to many studies. I set up the fuel and oxidizer boundary conditions at 300 Kelvin, where I set as fuel 100% of methane and as oxidizer 100% of oxygen. Then, I enable automatic grid refinement and generate flamelets. After go to calculate the PDF table. As a result, a flamelet mixture and PDF mixture containing all the combustion species will appear. As a boundary condition, I enable the axis. Fuel mass flow rate equal to 1 kg per second. An oxidizer mass flow rate equal to 3 kg per second. And the pressure outlet with zero pressure gauge. And the wall with no slip conditions. 
My solution method is simple second order upwind for space and first order implicit for time. Initialize my flow with expected pressure in the combustion chamber equal to 2 MPa. In total, the simulation took 20,000 iterations with a 10 minus 4 time step. As a result, we may see a quasi-stationary flow that would never converge due to the transient by nature combustion process. The following animation visualizes streamlines and temperature. The simulation results are close to dimensionless analytical analysis and provide more information for the rocket engine design, especially the distribution of pressure and temperature, and the thermal fluxes for the future advanced research of the combustion chamber. The presented method works perfectly with gaseous propellants and does not apply to liquid or solid ones. To calculate a phase change, you need to enable an appropriate model. However, it is outside of today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for the development of your project or study of aerospace propulsion. See you soon.